what's up everybody um, I'm in the middle right now of uh, putting a cam um, in my 89 Mustang a mild cam and um, I'm doing um, just doing a mild stage one trick flow but I've got AFR 185 heads so I've got 202 valves um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of talk online and everything and um, about piston to valve clearance with uh, with 202s stock pistons and the stock valve reliefs that are in the stock pistons and there's a lot of people say that the 202 valves won't clear um, so there's ways to check that um, you can um, you know there's uh, you can use clay you can use clay dough pull the head off put it on top of the piston and put the head back on adjust your rockers and roll the motor over by hand measure your um, you know, measure your clearance between your, your intake valve and, and the piston and your exhaust valve and the piston. You can see the pattern where it's hitting, if it's, you know, how many thousands it is within the, the eyebrow or the valve relief on the piston. So I'm doing this on mine and um, I'm using a dial indicator, a magnetic, di magnetic dial indicator on the, um, on the top of the valve stem. So how I'm doing it is, um, Obviously, the, the original, you know, 5-liter HO uh, Mustang motors used a hydraulic roller cam. You can't, um, you can't turn the motor over with hydraulic lifters without the lifters bleeding down, especially if you have a lot of spring pressure, um, you know, open spring pressure, you'll, the lifters will bleed down the first revolution of the motor. So, there's two ways to do it. You can either... Um, use a checker spring, a real light checker spring, and relate, replace your valve springs on the head, or um, do what I'm doing, and you're, you can turn a hydraulic lifter of any kind into a solid lifter just for piston to valve clearance checking purposes. So if you look on the top of your hydraulic lifter, you've got these little, this little wire wire clip that holds this this cup in this is where your push rod sits if you pop this off what you're gonna find I already did it on another one just for the purposes of the video is here's your clip it's just a little kind of like a little wire C clip your the cup the push rod cup is gonna come out and inside of it is going to be a plunger so you get in there with something and here comes your here comes your plunger Okay. Underneath that is a spring. So for the purpose of doing this, you're going to remove that spring and keep it out. So you saw when I pulled it out, this little boss or nub was, was facing down toward the bottom of the lifter. To make this a solid lifter for just for checking purposes, you're gonna turn this upside down, this plunger, and stick it in there and then you put your cup back on. And you can see it fits in there. You've got room for your, your clip, your, your little wire retainer to go back in there. And then you're gonna set this inside, um, you know, obviously set it back in the block, put your, put your dog bones in there, and put your push rod in, adjust the valve, which you're not gonna wanna put any preload on the rocker arm or lifter itself how you normally adjust because the AFR heads, um, I'm sure like trick flows and everything else have stud mounted rockers. They have rocker studs and they're fully adjustable. Um, I think you can run, you can run pedestal style, the factory style, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to go with this. On an adjustable stud mounted rocker, normally how you do it is you adjust your, um, you know, adjust your each rocker arm to zero lash. And I like to go about a quarter to three eighths of a turn. I don't like to go any more than that. Um, any more than that, I mean, I've seen people go three quarters to, to one full turn. The motors don't like to rev when you do it like that. I like them loose. I like them, you know, I don't like a tight motor. Um, but you're going to um, basically just remove the lash. You don't want to put any preload on it because there is now no give to this lifter. And what you're going to do is if you try giving it preload, you're going to start opening the valve up. The rocker arm is going to open the valve. So you want as close to zero lash as you can get. Um, this eliminates having to change the valve spring to do a, um, you know, to put a checker spring on there, a real light checker spring. Um, 
you know, you can you can do it any way you want. You can use the clay method. You can do a, you know a dial indicator like I'm doing. Um, but I just want to show how to um, you know how to do this because a lot of there's a lot of vehicles, a lot of applications where solid lifters aren't available. Um, and this is this is how you make a solid lifter because once that once that retaining ring is back on there, you're going to be right back to where as far as cup height you're going to go right back to where where the the original untouched lifter is um so i just want to share that with everybody i'm not sure you know if anybody knows that or you know wants to save a couple of bucks and don't want to pull your heads apart to do a checker spring you can do it like this and um you know it's free it literally takes about two minutes to pull this apart and then you know like i said once it's um once you're done you just pull your uh pull it back out set your spring back in there put your plunger in and put your uh, put your cup back in it's under pressure now so you're gonna have to hold this down while you put the while you put the clip back on it but that's pretty much how you do it so I wanted to share it with everybody uh, anybody thinking of doing um, you know a cam swap um, you know in a five liter uh, Fox Mustang or SN95 Mustang here's a good cheap way to make a solid lifter out of a hydraulic lifter all right catch you guys later